just jumped up about 34 horsepower. And guess what, guys? I didn't even put the IE tune for the run and flap delete on my car yet. So can you imagine once I put the actual tune that allows more airflow, what my car can give me? If you want to know more about this IE intake manifold and how to install it on your car and take the parts from your old intake manifold to the new one, watch this video from the beginning to end and you're going to find out how you can get more torque and more horsepower. This is Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors. As you can see right here, it's not 100% open, so you never have that 100% airflow in your vehicle. And once again, over here, you don't have those actual runner flaps in your vehicle. All right, as you guys can see, I have successfully taken out the factory intake manifold. My goal right now is to transfer this fuel rail line, the plugs for the fuel injectors, as well as the General Electrics, onto the integrated engineering intake manifold. As you can see, this one has a throttle body seal here, that seals right here, and you can see the infamous runner flaps right here. No one ever wanted to know how the runner flaps work. If you look right here, this little lever right here is what your throttle responds to. So what happens is when you're starting your car, when you're doing a cold start, etc., your car gradually lets a little air into your um, engine. As you can see right here, it's not 100% open, so you never have that 100% airflow in your vehicle. And once again, over here, you don't have those actual runner flaps in your Just vehicle. Just to kind of show you the mechanism when you guys are I'm just wondering what the factory intake does. And a lot of times when it goes out, what happens is this mechanism goes out and the runner flaps don't open properly the way they need to, et cetera. So that's just a FYI. Also, if you look over here at the IE intake manifold, instead of using this gasket as well as this gasket right here, they come with their own gaskets and their own screws for you to successfully um, install the actual intake manifold. This is not the kit that it comes with. These are the, this comes with every one. These are the traditional parts, just so you can reinstall and have the right threading for every screw, that for every part that comes from here, that comes to here to actually fit into this intake manifold. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically take off this fuel rail line, take off the central plugs, and start putting it right over here on this IE intake manifold. Before I transfer these parts from the factory, before I transfer the parts from the OE intake manifold, I'm gonna start putting this together. I'm gonna to start plugging in all of these water methanol ports as I won't be using direct injection into each cylinder. I'm gonna still continue to use my charge pipe. So I'm gonna take these plugs right here and I'm gonna go ahead and put some blue Loctite on them. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug these up first. I generally use a ratchet because you wanna just ensure that it's on there snug and tight. You don't wanna use just like a screwdriver head. You wanna use something that can get it really, really tight. So as you can see right now, I'm just basically putting on, I put on some blue Loctite, then put on red, blue is, you know, interchangeable. I mean, so blue Loctite, you can um, take it out after a while. Um, however, the red is permanent, but of course we know it's permanent, but you can still take it out. But blue is a lot easier to take out in case I do decide to run the mat to the floor. So what I'm doing right now is just tighten those up. I'm done tighten those up. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. Take out this air intake sensor from right here from the factory manifold. And I'm going to put it right over here in the IE manifold. Guys, I'm... So as you can see right here, I took out the air intake sensor from my factory manifold and I put it into the IE manifold right over here. So next step. The next step is I'm going to go ahead and unloosen this fuel rail line from right here. It's going to be a bolt right here. It's going to be a bolt right here. These are the bolts that we weren't supposed to take off when removing the intake manifold. And then I'm going to transfer that over to the IE intake manifold. It looks like the tool for the job 
To take this out is gonna be a T27. So I'm gonna take this out with a T27. So once you unscrew the bolts right here, you're gonna turn it around and what you wanna do is you want to loosen this fuel line that goes to the fuel pump so you can successfully take this off. Got this screwdriver and I just kind of help, just kind of pry it open right here. That way the fuel line can successfully come out. As you can see, I'm gonna, this is successfully off of the intake manifold. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug a few things and show you what I'm gonna unplug in a second. I'm gonna do now, um, the only thing that's holding this in place is gonna be this um, module that goes right over here to the runner flap. And then also the harness that screws in right here to keep the plugs in place. So I'm gonna remove these so I can completely take this entire fuel line off. All right, got that out. Next step. Let's see guys, I successfully have the fuel line off of the OEM intake manifold. It's that simple guys. So now my goal and objective is gonna to be to put the fuel line on here. However, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna to have to grind these with a grinder or Dremel as these tubes right here are too thick for these. That's the only fabrication that you have to do. Just grind those down as um, these are just too thick versus the factory one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just to show you guys, these are gonna be the areas that I need to grind that I marked in red. So I just need to do a little bit of grinding on it now, I can technically squeeze this on and screw it on. However, this is what's gonna determine where the actual fuel injector sit and it has to be seamless. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grind it because it touches a little bit right here and this it touches right here and right there and all of them parts are marked in red. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind those areas so that I can successfully put this fuel line on here where um, I can screw in the top bolts. All right, guys, you guys can look at my horrible grinding job. <laughs> you know, really didn't care, honestly. I'm just grinding it to fit, but as you can see, I just grinded those few areas that I was talking about so it can fit onto the actual intake bolt. So let's try So as you guys can see, I pretty much took the entire fuel line. And what I did is, as you can see, this matches right up. I don't have this injector on right here. Um, this had issues coming out, so I need to put this one back in. But yeah, this is just kind of showing you guys um, how the fuel line looks once it's on the actual, um, once it's on the actual IE intake manifold. So right now I'm gonna tighten that up and start getting everything tightened up. Sure, I have it in the exact right spot. As you can see, I just turned it over. And now that I turned it over, I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and fasten in that bolt and fastening that bolt right there. And that'll let me know that my fuel injectors are properly lined up. You don't want it to extend too far out or too far in. So before I tighten up everything else on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and secure this. And like I said, um, they come with their own bolts for you to actually secure everything that you need. So as you can see, the factory intake manifold is plastic. So therefore you had these, you know, a different thread. So this wouldn't work on the actual IE intake manifold. Also, this is a side note, guys. Anytime that I change out fuel injectors, as you can see right over here, anytime I change out fuel injectors or if I take them out the car, I always just get uh, a fuel injector kit. And what it comes with is it comes with another, you know, rubber seal. It comes with um, the brackets that you need for the fuel injector. You know, this is the old one, as you can see. I just like to get a new one. These are about 15 bucks. You know, once you take the intake manifold off, just so you won't have any leaks when you're putting it back in, it's always good to just, you know, get an extra set of these. I got four of them for 15 bucks. So yeah, just want to show you guys that. Um, before I put on the fuel rail, I'm changing out, as you can see, on this injector, we have this part 
I don't have it on this part, so I'm just gonna basically take it from here and put it on you. On this part, on this part, you may have to use an alley wrench because you really can't get a tool through. So as you can see, I'm basically putting the fuel rail line right over here on the new intake manifold. So I just took it off and I'm just following the guidelines. So here we go. As you can see, I'm just gonna just turn this and get this tight. I'm just gonna turn this and get this tightened on and we'll go to the next step. All right, guys, just to get us caught up and recap, if you're just chiming into the video, uh, previously I put on the intake air sensor right here. And then also right here, I put the plugs on for my net injection, being that I'm not gonna use those four um, injector ports. And then I put on the fuel rail from the old intake manifold. So now there's a wiring harness right here, which is for you know the knock sensor, which is for the which is for the component that powers the actual fuel injectors and the general electrics in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much put it right here. As you can see, guys, it's plug and play. Plug and play, guys. They pretty much um make it a plug and play fit. So let's get that attached. This is a side note, this is my thread, and I am putting plum plumber's tape on there, and this is gonna be for air as well as water. Um, being that I'm spraying meth and at the same time, I'm going to have a lot of PSI coming out of here. So on this factory thing, it's, it doesn't fit properly. This one screws in, but this one doesn't. I was just going to screw this one in because this is just a bracket. However, this one goes into the intake manifold. So I don't want to have any air leaking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just shave this plastic part. Um, that way it can sit flush on here and I can go ahead and screw it in. All right, so all you have to do is just kind of trim this plastic for it to fit, but you know, or or maybe you can even just get a plug, but the whole purpose of me doing this was because this is um, an open airway through the intake manifold and you know, with your boost pressure, you definitely don't want, you know, anything to back out. So I did put some plumber's tape on there and that worked. So yeah, so far so good. We got on our fuel line. We got on our intake air sensor. We have on a wire harness. And you can see you got my injectors in place. Everything's looking good so far. A little dusty in there. Everything looking good so far, guys. All right, so now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put on the purge line. So my next step is I'm gonna put on the purge line. All right guys, so this is how the purge line looks on the actual intake manifold. I've already taken out the screw, but just wanted to show you guys, this is how it looks. And let me go ahead and turn it around. So as you can see, when you turn it around, the purge line is actually gonna be right here. Okay, so this, this purge line goes into right here. And this is the one that, you know, for me taking it out in the first video, where that vacuum purge goes into. So what I'm gonna have to do on this one is I'm gonna have to take this purge line and I'm gonna have to put it here. However, if you notice, this one goes in a straight angle like this, whereas this one right here actually goes straight up. So with the kit that they give you, they give you these two bits right here. So basically they give you a little elbow and then they give you that bit right there. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just pretty much spin this into the intake manifold to where it's gonna be like that. And that way you can put this purge line on there. So that's what I'm gonna do. But before I do this, I'm gonna take off this purge line and I'm gonna put it on this intake manifold. Good plumber's taper right here. So, you know, I know you can use Loctite, but when you're dealing with PSI and air, you know, especially if you've dealt with air suspension, you want to always make sure that you're blocking any way that you can get a leak. And if you have air suspension, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to cake this up with some plumber's tape, these two. And once I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and get the purge line and transfer it over here. All right. All right, guys, I got that piece on right now, the elbow and the part for the purge line. I kind of angled it because I felt like this was in the way and um, I'm gonna see if I can still angle it or bend it a little bit because 
this would have blocked the, as you can see, this purge thing from going on there. So, yeah, go ahead and put the purge. So, basically, guys, once you want to loosen the purge line, the only thing you do is you just go like this, and just take it out, just like that. So, now the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in. So, give me one second. All right, guys, so this is going to be the top part of the purge line. So I'm, I may have to do a little bending on the purge line, but as you can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in because ideally the other part of the um, purge line from the car is gonna go here. So I wanna make sure that this is intact. All right. All right, as you guys can see, I have the top part of the purge line on. Now I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna put the bottom side of the purge line on. All right, guys, like I said, I put it in that little angle and it seems to be working fine on that angle. It squeezed right in there. So yeah, so now I got that hooked up. This is the one that's gonna go to the car. So now the next thing that I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this fuel line back on. So this fuel line is gonna bolt up right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this fuel line back on. And we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, guys. When you're putting on this fuel line, you want to put it right here and just kind of go through this first tube. And then you come out right here. Because this is going to be the part that's going to go back to the fuel pump. So just wanted to let you know you just slide it through there. Put this on here. And then this is going to be that main part. All right, All right, guys. So I officially have the fuel line on. So we're getting there, guys. Um, at this point, as you can see... Um, there's really nothing else that I need on this OEM intake manifold. I've taken everything out that I need. Why you have to have a special tune to run this IE intake manifold, as you can see, there's a runner flap plug right here that controls the runner flaps when you're starting your car. As you can see, this does not have a runner flap plug. So automatically that's a check engine light because there's no communication. And over here you have your intake manifold sensor and as you can see although we have these extra plugs that are here we're not hooking up those plugs so this plug is not going to go to uh all right so this plug is not going to go to the runner flap that's just going to be avoided plug kind of wish they had something that can just kind of keep this plugged up i might tape it off or something and then as you can see we're not gonna have um, the plug plugged into the sensor either. So those are gonna be two live plugs and that's um, solely the reason why, um, solely the reason why you get to check engine lights. It's not that it's doing something to your car. Well, it is, but it's just simply because it's not communicating. So you need a tune or a bag to let your car know, okay, I can, I don't need this. Just like if you put aftermarket racing seats in your car and you need the airbag lights to go out. The next step okay. is gonna be for me to go ahead and install the throttle body. Uh, I'm not gonna install it with my throttle body spacer as I don't um, need to have, I don't need to have the spacer on there. So I'm just gonna install my regular throttle body. And the great thing is, you know, like I said before, they come with new bolts for you. So you should be good to go. All right. Throttle body time. And guys, like I said, they come with seals, um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this seal on before I put the throttle body. I got the throttle body right there, just making sure I have the orientation right. You definitely want to always make sure you have the orientation right so you don't do any double work. And yeah, I'm going to put that on and put the throttle body on. And we're getting, we're getting there. After this, it's just going to be a matter of putting it in the car. All right. All right, guys, so far so good. As you can see, I have the throttle body on. I got all of the bells and the whistles and the plugs and the wires. So right now I'm just gonna put these seals right here on um, this part that's gonna go to the engine. And then I'm gonna plug up this as I'm not gonna use this um, being that I have an oil catch can. But if you didn't have an oil catch can, this is for your um, OEM PCV line. And this is gonna be 
some boost taps that I'm gonna use for my car right there. I might block one of these off and then have a boost tap for one of them. So yeah, one is gonna be blocked off, then one is gonna be um, a boost tap. All right. All right, got the seals in. Now it's time for the taps to taps. And also when you guys are doing this, I'm using this air filter. Uh, shout out to KN, LOL. I'm using this air filter to um, prop this. You don't want to accidentally damage the fuel injectors or any crucial components. So yeah, I'm gonna use that to kind of prop this up so I won't uh, damage it. So I got the boost. So this is gonna be my boost tap right here. This is going to be a plug, and this is going to be a plug. On, and like I said, this is because I'm running the oil catch can. All right, guys, uh, it's almost time to rock and roll. So it looks like I officially have the intake manifold uh, done. I kind of made a mistake, but I did make a mistake. So basically, on this factory, So basically, remember part one where I pulled out this purge line on this factory intake manifold? I thought they provided me with a boost tap, but they provided me with a purge line. So this is actually gonna be another purge line. Okay, so technically this is the same size as a boost tap. So on this extra slot right here, I would just have to go ahead and um put a boost tap right there so I can, cause this is how I run my boost. Um, if you, if let me just show you my old boost. So my old boost kind of just went into the actual, uh, my old boost went into the actual old intake manifold, like a push in, but with the IE manifold, it's a screw in. So I'm not gonna be able to use this. However, this is my boost wire. So this is going to my boost gauge inside of my car. So I'm gonna put another one of these um, on the other end so I can read the boost of my car and I'm gonna use that other one for the purge. All right, getting there guys, getting there. Getting there. Almost there. All right, guys, I just want to show you, this is how I'm setting up my boost tap. I'm going to go ahead and um, put this, uh, let's see if I can get a good angle for you. I'm going to put this in this slot right there. And then I'm going to take this boost tap off of here and just kind of thread it on there zip tie like this. So that's going to be my boost tap that's gonna to go to my engine. So if you guys ever want to set up a boost tap, this is an optional way to set it up. So I just put the intake manifold in the car. I haven't tightened everything up together yet. And the reason why is because there's a few things that I need to go to the parts store to get. So for example, right here, these bolts right here, I just use alley wrenches to tighten them. I need to get a ratchet small enough to get in here and tighten it this way because I just want to note that you can't go in through this way like you, you could on a regular intake. So the ones at the top, you have to kind of ratchet and tighten from here. However, the ones at the bottom, you can go um, through uh, the original part. So yeah, so um, right now, as you can see, um, I got my uh, camshaft sensor right here. I'm gonna put it in once I'm done tightening everything up. I got my um, my purge line that I'm gonna put in once I'm done with everything. I'm gonna connect these two. Uh, I'm gonna connect the bracket back over to um, the actual intake manifold. And I'm gonna be 100% honest, guys. I went ahead just to be safe and not sorry. I took the throttle body back off just so I can plug the water pump plug in because when you're putting the intake manifold in, you have to be very, very, very careful 
that you don't uh, damage your uh, fuel injectors. So I didn't want to take that chance. So I gave myself some space. It's just four bolts to put the uh, throttle body back on. So yeah, I just wanted to note that's a learning um, that I had. And of course this purge line right here, I'm going to ultimately put it back in here, swing this bracket back over. So yeah, I'm done with that. Gonna put the cash can back together and we're gonna start her up. So um, just give me one second. So let's get all those parts on so we can start her up and see how she sounds. And then we're gonna take her for a drive and see how she feels. All right, thank you guys. All right guys, so it looks like I have everything in place. I, I re-put back in the camshaft sensor. I re-put in the intake air temperature sensor. I plugged up the throttle body. I, I re-put these brackets right here and right here, which just holds it in place. I plugged in, as you can see, the knock sensor, the fuel injector sensor. And what I'm doing right now before, so now what's left for me to do, like I said, this is gonna be that purge valve that goes to the regular intake manifold right here. So I'm gonna put that right here. Okay, so that's gonna go there and I'm gonna zip tie it just to kind of keep it in place. I'm gonna put a boost tap right here, which is gonna be identical to this. Put a boost tap right here so I can um, run um, my boost gauge. Like I said before, this boost gauge won't fit into the car because the intake manifold for the IE actually has uh, a threaded one. So I just went to Home Depot and I got a threaded one and I'm just gonna put it right there. Okay, so let me give you a better picture. So it's gonna go right there. That's where I'm gonna put the boost gauge. Okay, so as you can see by my fuel pump, I have tissue paper by that fuel pump line and I have tissue paper by that fuel pump line. So what I'm doing is I'm just um, priming my car up just to see if I have any fuel leaks before I start it. Um, once I know that I don't have any fuel leaks, then I'm going to reattach the oil catch can. If you don't have an oil catch can, traditionally you would reattach the PC valve right over here to this part right here, which is the area, uh, which is the area that you the PCV valve connects to. But since I have an oil catch can, I'm putting this right here. And then I'm gonna start her up. All right guys, so far no gas leaks, no gas leaks so far. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect my gonna go ahead and reconnect my charge pipe get this reconnected and we're gonna be on our way so i'm gonna go ahead and get this charge pipe reconnected so once i reconnect the charge pipe and the oil catch can i'll be good to go to try to rip her up and see how she if she starts all right guys all right guys this is going to be the official startup i just finished putting everything together i Crossed my T's, I dotted my I's. I made sure all the plugs were in place. I double checked the fuel pressure. I made sure I didn't have any leaks. So this is gonna be my official startup. Being that I had the fuel reel off, there may be a little slight lag and power coming on because all of the fuel has to get back into the injectors. You gotta get back into the intake manifold. And my car really didn't get to prime itself enough. So here we go. Here's my official startup, guys. Let's see if we can get Frankenstein to life. I'm going to do, you know, 
I'm gonna do pulls and different things. This is a long video, so the next video coming out, I'm gonna give you guys a test run so you guys can just get a real vibe and feel of really the big difference. you guys know right now you know I haven't officially you know dyno my car at a dyno but however my car was tuned and as you guys can see from this video right here the naysayers that you know feel that there's a lot of people that's doubting our platform my car was 443 so from the perspective of adding the intake manifold to my car, my car just jumped up about 34 horsepower and I don't even have the IE tune on my car yet. So from the perspective of just adding the intake manifold, my car just jumped up about 34 horsepower and guess what guys, I didn't even put the IE tune for the runner flap delete on my car yet. So can you imagine once I put the actual tune that allows more airflow, what my car can give me? And guys, this video is not to debate about horsepower, how much horsepower I have, is it to the crank, is it to the wheel? This video, I got plenty of other videos for that. This video is just to solely just show you from what my horsepower used to be and what it is now from installing the IE intake manifold. So like I said, I use this as a gauge because it's it's consistently read my previous horsepower all the same. And just from adding that intake manifold, it jumped me up 35 horsepower. But yeah, I appreciate everyone if you made it to the end of this video. I got part three coming out probably on Sunday, a couple of days from now. So yeah, got the IE intake manifold on. I hope you watched the entire video from beginning to end. If you have any questions, let me know. Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors, I'm out.